A client diagnosed with diabetes comes to the emergency room. The first thing that I know is that my patient has a diagnosis of diabetes. And this patient with diabetes is in the ER, emergency room. The client is pale, diaphoretic, and reports dizziness. What should be the nurse initial action? So remember the inductive reasoning that we were talking about earlier, the critical thinking ability. If you're reading this scenario, what do you think is going on? What do you think is the patient's problem? Diabetes, the clinical manifestations are pale, diaphoresis, and dizziness. What do you think could be the problem? Anybody thinking of hypoglycemia? Right? What are we doing? What are we using? Inductive reasoning, critical thinking. Notice. I do not even have a clue of what the possible answer is. Honestly, I don't really care about the answers right now. NCLEX is about critical thinking, decision making. So if you are at a hospital, if you're working in a hospital, so now we're doing the role play. You see the role play, how it works? Now I am role playing with all of you. If you're at a hospital and they're telling you that your patient, your diabetic patient in room 100 is pale, diaphoretic, and reporting dizziness, the first thing that is going to come to your mind is hypoglycemia. There could be other problems, other causes, but what is the first thing that comes to your mind based on the Description of the scenario. Hypoglycemia. Okay. Now, this is the next step of the exercise. Tell me in the comment section three things in order. So one, two, and three. Three things in order that you will do for this patient. If you are the nurse receiving this information, what are you going to be doing? What's going to be your first step, your second step, and your third step? Do you have an objective data that this is hypoglycemia? Are you going to be giving medications, juice, because you think that possibly this patient has hypoglycemia? Maybe. Let's look at the answers. So now that you thought of three possible things, starting with a priority action, let's look at the answer. One, instruct the client to recognize the signs and symptoms of hypoglycemia and hyperglycemia. Did anybody thought about teaching at this moment? Because answer number one says instruct. Instruct means teaching. So was anybody initial action to teach the patient about hypoglycemia and hyperglycemia? Probably not, right? You're not thinking about teaching now. You're thinking of either assessing or doing something, a nursing action that helps the patient. So teaching at the moment, which is an implementation, is not the right answer. Number two says, assess vital signs. Wow, this is important. Heart rate, respiratory rate, blood pressure. 
and blood glucose levels. What an interesting answer. Why is this an interesting answer? This is an assessment that validates the subjective data described on the question. Because it seemed to be hypoglycemia, but I did not have an objective measurement that told me that this was really hypoglycemia. So validating and finding out the blood glucose level, it is an extremely important answer. And many of you, when I ask you to do the exercise, you thought of that answer as the first answer. And there it is. Answer number three and four, very interesting. Minis administering metformin PO and regular insulin IV. Metformin and insulin are administered to treat hyperglycemia, not hypoglycemia. This scenario, the clinical manifestations are of hypoglycemia. So therefore, I cannot administer insulin or metformin because that is going to create a further complication. It's going to bring the blood glucose level further down and possibly kill your patient. So answer number three and four are eliminated. The correct answer is two. But now I can almost guarantee that there is somebody out here that is saying, professor, but what if, what if this is hyperglycemia and not hypoglycemia? Because sometimes it is very difficult to understand because some clinical manifestations are similar. Now in hyperglycemia, we see more the polyuria, polydipsia, polyphagia. We see other clinical manifestations, but I understand. What if you're saying, Professor, but I'm not too sure. I'm not, I am not too sure if this is hypo or hyperglycemia. That is exactly this, the same reason why I'm telling you that answer number two is the best answer because you need to validate and, and really understand what is going on before I give metformin or insulin or glucagon or dextrose, you have to identify if you have a hypoglycemia scenario or a hyperglycemia scenario. Do you see how the exercise works? Do you see how this exercise can really improve your critical thinking very fast? And the more you do it, the better. Okay, the nurse working in the PACU, recovering a male client after an exploratory laparotomy, administered the prescribed hydromorphone intravenous push. So several key factors here. Remember, I'm reading out loud, right? That was a technique that we could do, okay? The nurse is working in PACU, the unit where the nurse is working. That is important. Post-anesthesia care unit. All right, the male patient is recovering after an exploratory laparotomy. And he says the nurse administers hydromorphone intravenous push. So the nurse administers a medication that is intravenous. Five minutes later, so notice the time frame. Okay, five minutes later, the nurse assesses a respiration of eight. So five minutes later, something changed, and the respiratory rate now is eight. Whenever they give you a numeric value, that is an objective value. Why is that important? Usually when you have objective data, 
usually your answer is implementation. But let's keep reading. We have a patient recovering from post anesthesia care unit after a, a surgery. I give a medication called hydromorphone IV that works faster. And five minutes later, the respiratory rate is eight. What is the normal respiratory rate? Normal respiratory rate is 12 to 20. Which intervention should the nurse implement first? This is a priority keyword. What did I just do? I follow the system. I read the question in my mind or out loud, better to practice. I identify certain keywords in the question now I know that I'm dealing with a priority question and my next step is to identify what do I think I will do next. What are three actions that you will take to help this patient in this condition? Is it an assessment answer? Is it an implementation answer? And do not fall into the mistake, because I saw this in a comment in one of our YouTube videos, that because it says here implement, you think that the answer is going to be implementation. Not necessarily. The answer could be an assessment. Maybe not in this scenario, but in other scenarios. The word implementation only means an action. What is going to be your following action, your next action. All right, what are the answers? Number one, let's call the doctor. Call the anesthesiologist to come and assess the patient. So you're telling the NCLEX that your first action will be to pick up the phone and call the anesthesiologist or ask somebody to call the anesthesiologist. So you're Priority nursing action, in answer number one, is not to see the patient or address the patient. Answer number one is looking for somebody else. Answer number two, administer naloxone. Answer number three, reassess the patient 20 minutes later. And number four, prepare to ventilate the client. Did, did anybody thought about ventilation to intubate the patient and put the patient on a ventilator? Anybody thought about that? I don't think anybody, anybody thought about that, right? Respiratory rate of eight, not sufficient to intubate a patient. Patient's unconscious, not breathing, then yeah, we, we, may, we may go the intubation route. But not enough clinical manifestation to think of ventilating the patient right now. And if you're thinking of number four as the possible answer, right now, you're probably falling into the what-if syndrome. You're thinking uh, too much in depth. Are we dealing with an emergency here? Do you think we're dealing with an emergency here? Absolutely, this is an emergency. The patient respiratory rate is eight. If we don't do something quick, your patient will die. So this is an emergency, and we have object objective data, meaning that the nurse has done some type of assessment to identify that the respiratory rate is eight. So that tells me that I need to do an implementation. Okay, I see that somebody commented in the comment section, eight intubate. I think that's a, that's an, a, a, like a key to remember glaucoma scale of eight intubate. I think maybe that's what you're relating to, but it does not apply. A respiratory rate of eight, not sufficient for intubation. Okay, so not the answer. So if we eliminate answer number four, we are left with answer number one, two, and three. 
One, call the doctor. Two, administer naloxone. Three, reassess the patient 20 minutes later. Well, we just identified that this is an emergency. So coming back 20 minutes later means do not do anything right now. Do nothing right now and come back later. Uh-uh. Your patient is unstable. Your patient is in an acute emergency situation. If you wait 20 minutes, you can come back 20 minutes later and your patient is dead. So three is not the answer. Now we have left one or two. So what do we do now? Do we call the doctor first? Do we administer naloxone? And a good question that is probably arising in your mind right now is, Professor, but don't I need to call the doctor first before I administer the medication? Don't I need a doctor's order? Meaning I have to select one first to get the order and then select two wrong. No, for the NCLEX, it's not like that. For the NCLEX, it is assumed that you have the doctor's order. All you have to do is make sure that the order is correct. So I do not need to call the doctor first and I can administer the naloxone because I have clinical manifestations indicating that my patient has a respiratory problem and the medication reverses the effect of hydromorphone. So the answer is number two. Here, I can also use the when to call the doctor strategy. Do I have something that I can do first that helps the patient's problem? If the answer is yes, do it. Don't call the doctor first. It says, a few minutes after the nurse has given an intradermal injection of an allergen to a patient who is undergoing ski skin testing for allergies, the patient reports feeling answers short of breath and dizzy. Wow, what an interesting scenario. So the nurse gave a medication, the intradermal injection of an allergen. Okay, so the nurse is doing a, a procedure to identify certain allergies that the patient could have. As you're doing this, the patient reports means that something happened that changed the patient's condition. Reports feeling anxious, so anxiety. Here's the big problem, short of breath. So we have an allergy scenario where the breathing is being affected. So the patient is short of breath after the injection of the allergen and is also affecting the neurological status because he's telling you that the patient is dizzy, which action included in the emergency protocol should the nurse take first. Notice they're helping you a lot here by giving you these words, emergency protocol. It's telling you that this is an emergency. So do not select any answer that you don't do on an emergency respiratory problem. They're telling you that this shortness of breath is not normal. In these keywords, emergency protocol, they're telling you that the shortness of breath is significant in order to follow an emergency protocol. What do you think is going on and what do you think could be the possible interventions? The answers are oxygen, Oof. very important answer, oxygen. How many of you 
I've heard over and over in nursing school that oxygen is important. Two, obtaining IV access with a large bore IV catheter. Three, immediately administer epinephrine intramuscular. And four, administer albuterol per nebulizer mask. So, as you're reviewing this scenario, you could be like, wow, oxygen is good, albuterol is also good, and epine epinephrine is good. But remember that we're talking about a specific emergency protocol when it comes to injecting an allergen and the patient developing shortness of breath and the anaphylaxis. So you need something extremely fast to prevent this patient to go in into respiratory arrest. So oxygen is important, but oxygen is breathing. Epinephrine is important, but it helps with airway. Hmm. Now, what strategy comes into mind, into your mind? Did anybody think in this scenario about the Maslow hierarchy of needs? All of you that are in the membership, did you recall the Maslow's hierarchy of needs strategy here? Because it applies. We got physiological responses. Some answers deals with airway, others with breathing. What does Maslow say? Airway has priority over breathing. Oxygen is breathing. Epinephrine helps with the airway. So airway over breathing means that I am going to eliminate number one. Now, I am not saying that oxygen is wrong. No, it is good. Oxygen is a good answer. It is not my first answer, my priority answer. Answer number two, we can eliminate it because it doesn't deal right now with airway or breathing. And albuterol, albuterol, you could think, well, uh, this also, uh, if I administer, can help with oxygen exchange. But first, it's not going to work as fast. And the protocol, based on the World Allergy Organization guidelines, the protocol is to administer first epinephrine and then oxygenation. So the correct answer, it is three. Now, I ask you a question. Crusaders, NCLEX Crusaders. In any of the questions that I have shared with you guys today, including this one, have we really gone into in-depth on the mechanism of action specifically of any of the medications? No, because on most of the, of the questions, you don't need it. I'm not saying that you shouldn't. You need to learn. And the, the more you can learn, the better. But let's be realistic. There are thousands of medication. You're not going to remember the mechanism of action, the side effect, the adverse effect, a toxic effect for all of them. It's impossible to do that. This is why pharmacology is so important. But if you pay attention to this seven-day training, this will drastically make a difference in your ability to answer pharmacology questions.